an incident audit on this. Let's go to Gary Hager, founder and president of Integrated Wealth Management, and Ron Davari, founder and CEO of New Oak Capital. Guys, Gary, Ron, thank you for joining us this morning. Mm. So a little bit of a quiet day, but um, I'll go to you first, Gary. What should we be watching today and the rest of the week? Is it going to be about earnings or this slew of economic reports that we've got out? Greece probably leads the stories right now to see what the European Union is going to come up with. Um, questions are, are they going to come out with something today, tomorrow? I think these type of deals typically take a little bit longer, so I'd be very surprised if we got anything really concrete out of them this week. So um, the markets are going to hinge on what comes out of Greece and I the think EU? A big part of it right now, you know, it's the flavor of the week right now, and while Greece is a relatively small part of, from a GDP standpoint of the European Union, um, it's still the flavor. So they're looking at it and saying, okay, what are we going to do to get Greece out of this debt problem? I mean, the numbers are kind of horrific. If we were sitting with numbers like Greece is sitting against GDP, um, the populace probably would be storming Washington as we speak. So, I mean, you've got some good companies coming up for earnings. Everybody loves to see Kraft, Walmart. Um, you are you know, expecting like, some uh, positive I'm numbers? I'm expecting a surprise out of Kraft, actually. Okay. All this stuff. I do. We do more technical than fundamental, but we watch both sides. And I think that Kraft is going to surprise tomorrow, which I think will give an initial boost to the week. All right, and Ron, obviously Walmart's going to be a big one out on Friday. Absolutely. What are you looking for there? Well, you know, obviously the, the, the global strategy that they've announced is too early to really affect things. Uh, that was the January news, obviously. Uh, we do think that uh, they're going to be, uh, uh, you know, they're going to come in line or slightly higher. Uh, the reason being, I think, the, the consumer uh, you know, they're really an indication of the economy. The economy has actually uh, uh, been uh, behaving a little bit better than people expected. But still, we, we saw a, a fall in the markets, on, in the equity markets on Friday. There's still a lot of concern out there, and we are still seeing um, sellers coming into the market based on the uncertainty around the recovery that we're seeing globally. Do you expect the recovery to start to speed up, Gary? Or are we sort of at a standstill right now? And a lot of, I've been looking at a lot of analyst notes this morning who say, watch the markets. They're just going to be range bound for a little bit. Yeah, I mean, from a technical standpoint, the markets are caught now in a little bit of a trap uh, between the 200 day moving average and the higher average is 18 and 50. That's the way we look at it. Plus, I've been shouting over my um, newsletter for months now that the market's gone too far too fast again. It's kind of like the guy at the top of the mountain nobody can hear. Mm. Um, and it was very similar to the way the market crashed earlier in 2008, hitting those March lows. Um, again, I said that was too far too fast and you guys should be buying with both hands. Where we are right now is kind of on an in-between. And uh, you know what we've basically told our subscribers is housing let us in in a variety of methods, but housing let us in, housing will lead us, lead out. us out. And okay. I think that because you have some figures coming up, and I do think you're right, I think the snow's gonna affect it a bit. But well, we were talking earlier, Ron, sure. and your concern uh, still lies within the housing market. You're concerned sure. about the number of foreclosures still coming right. on, and the inventories are still very right. high. I don't expect the housing to be a major driver of our economy for quite some time, because mm -hmm. these are very, you know, we're coming really off the lows. It's really just to watch, you know, to make sure that the, the patient is not really fully dead. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm making this very graphic, but, but really what we should be looking at is industrial production. Durable goods is a very important number to look at because that indicates... The big ticket items. The, the big ticket, and also indicates that the business confidence has gone up. They're actually placing orders, getting themselves ready to meet the consumer demand. Okay. But the two big uh, uh, things that are going to be inflection point for the economy in general. China is a big story. If they really, uh, you know, the, 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 US, the global economy has been pulled out of this, Use essentially China. China was a big factor. They're just about to restrain themselves, yes. and if that's that's going to be a major factor. Raising their bank reserves. Second is the you know essentially the deficit okay. problem. You know we have really uh, uh, driven the economy uh, pretty much with the stimulus and spending. Yeah. Now we are getting to the point where people are demanding that these deficits have to be cut. Yeah. Yeah. And so between those two, I think there are big uh, big ifs. So the equity market should be watching these 
because these are market movers. Okay. okay. I'm going to for an instant audit on the Greek issue. Let's also bring back Gary Hager of Integrated Wealth Management and Ron Devari of uh, New, Oak, uh, New Oak Capital. And gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, uh, being here to talk about this, certainly on President's Day in the U.S. But uh, it's a European problem, uh, guys. Let's begin with yeah. Gary, if I can. Gary, uh, the finance minister's getting together today, but uh, the point is it was a rather vague message last year, uh, last year, last week, wasn't it, when they told the Greek government, look, you've got to do something about this. We'll back you up, but, you know, really it's down to you. Uh, we don't have any details. Is that, uh, you know, is that something the market has to see? Yeah, I think overall you're going to get details out, um, Ashley, but I think for, to mm. some extent there's probably a lot of warring going on behind the scenes. We're not going to get C-SPAN watching those negotiations, I'll tell you that. Um, but I think that within the next, um, well, let's see where we are. I mean, I would say probably within the next five to ten days, we'll probably have something concrete enough that will give the markets enough assurances to say, all right, Greeks in the past. Now, who else? Greece, excuse me, is in the past. Now, who else do we have to worry about? So, I, I don't think they're that far away from a solution. I mean, look, uh, there isn't a politician I've met yet that wants to cut spending on anything. Um, but I think that <laughs> you're going to see Greece maybe set a model that's going to be followed by many other nations, maybe even including ours when it comes down to it. Maybe. Well, Ron, you know, let's, let's be realistic. The Greeks have been spending uh, hand over fist. Uh, they're supposed to get it down to the EU-required 3% of the, the, the deficit of their GDP in the course of two to three years. I mean, that seems highly unlikely, doesn't it? It does. I'm, <laughs> I'm wondering whether the EU itself will get to its own targets. So it's really a big, uh, <laughs> a, a big if here. Um, and, and I think that this is going to be a little bit of a give and take, but, uh, the, the, you know, we, we're going to, we, the ask is very large. I think you can't go from 13% uh, to 3% in two years, but they're going to have to take some steps, and those steps involve both, uh, obviously, tax as well as uh, re reduction. But I think they're also going to have to start uh, collecting uh, or, or uh, tightening up on the tax evaders, which is really another big problem mm. in, in Greece as well. Yeah, that, that should net them some uh, some decent income there. Nick, let me ask you this: Is this situation somewhat indicative of what the you know the the problem with the eurozone as a whole is? You have a single currency, that's fine, but each individual currency has its uh, each individual country rather has its own fiscal policy, its own taxing system. So, you aren't you going to have to uh, you know without a uniform f method, if you like, of looking after your economy? We're going to see this time and again. Absolutely. This was always going to be the case um, that, you know, in good times, this fiscal problem wouldn't necessarily arise. But in bad times, we're certainly having some pretty nasty times at the moment. It is going to be the problem. And just look at the arguments going on within, you know, with Greece and with the European Union at the moment. I mean, basically, you know, Greece does not want to take the nasty medicine that it's been told to take. And yet Germany is thinking, well, hold on, how are we going to sell this bailout of Greece where, you know, things are so much easier to a German population. And I mean, it's just, it boils down to a simpler problem, a political problem as that. But as we saw over the weekend, where Greece has said, OK, we're not going to we don't want to take any more austerity measures until middle of March, until we're forced basically to take them, because in March is when the EU, the ECB and the IMF go in and actually do an audit of its actual um, debt uh, problems. Um, and it'll be interesting to see what they come up with when they start uh, getting through all the details. Um, but for the moment, they're standing, and, and, and funnily enough, the, the Greek prime minister does seem to have the backing of his country on this. Uh, they're standing pretty hard um, on not wanting to really, you know, do any more than they have to, whereas at the same time, they're obviously coming under pressure from people like the Germans to actually do things like increase VAT by a couple of points to get some more money in. Um, it's, 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 it's going to be a struggle. And I mean, uh, you know, as you uh, suggested at the very outset, we're waiting for any sorts of details coming up. But what could be quite mm. interesting is at the moment, people are holding back the markets as far as CDS prices and the yield spreads with German and, and Greek uh, bonds has stabilized. But later this week, we mm. have Bond auctions in a lot of these countries, Ireland, France, Germany, Spain, Portugal, will the international investor continue to buy those bonds? Are they going to be happy with what's going on, the way things are progressing? could be an interesting test of Greece and Eurozone um, stability, uh, if, if nothing else. 
Absolutely. And of course, Merkel, the uh, German chancellor, is in a very difficult situation because as politicians and the public as a whole in Germany saying we don't need to be bailing out the Greeks. They overspent. They need to sort their own house out. Well, we'll continue to follow Absolutely. it. Uh, Ron, Gary, Nick, thank you so much for talking Greece.